Hello, friends. Welcome to another Academy of Cotopaxi conversation. Today's conversation is something of very much importance because it has to do with health, the health of everyone in our community. I'm very happy that we have the opportunity to invite all our students back on campus. Uh, this is a moment to celebrate, but also it is a time that we need to be even more careful and more conscious about the ways that we can protect ourselves, our loved ones, and everyone in our entire community. And I'm not just talking about the Cotopaxi community, I'm talking about Quito, Ecuador, and our global community. Um, I'm here today with our medical team, Drs. Nicholas Ortega and Estrellita Garcia, to help us all better understand how we can work together to ensure that we have a safe and hopefully uninterrupted return to on-campus learning. I also would like to uh, mention the fact is that we also will be continuing with online learning opportunities for students who cannot come to campus. So first we'd like to talk about is the virus itself. As everybody is probably aware, much of the world is entering a new phase of COVID-19. Indeed, many health experts call this a new virus altogether because the Delta and, its, and the other variants are much more contagious than the original. It is important to note that positive vaccination status has so far proven to protect the vaccinated from becoming very ill, but does not necessarily prevent them from contracting COVID and more importantly, passing it on to others who may not be vaccinated. Dr. Ortega, do you mind explaining the R naught factor as well as the viral load that people can pass on? Also, the importance of not coming to school if you have any uh, concerns about your travel status or your health status. Yes, of course. Hi, everyone. So uh, let's get straight to it. So the RO or R note is what uh, Infectologists uh, give this number to establish the ability of any disease to spread. So for example, for COVID-19, the early strains, we were talking about an RO from 1.4 ranging to 2.8. Just to give it a little bit of, of perspective, uh, the common flu has an RO of two, but with the growing pandemic and with the new Delta strain, we have an RO that surpasses three and some, even some, medical journals would put it even up to six so it has a very easy ability to spread this does not mean by any this number does not correlate directly to the severity of the virus we know the severity of the virus because of how it works on the on the population so uh, we know COVID-19 can be deadly and knowing that it has a bigger array of spread right now makes it even more important for us to keep all biosafety measures um, and so the good thing about here at AC is that we have created every single protocol to try to keep that at, at bay and don't, don't let us affect our campus. So if you feel ill by any chance, we have a wide array of symptoms of COVID. It has from a, can come from a very mild headache, lower back pain, and then we can have like total full on can't breathe, uh, can't walk up a flight of stairs, stomach problems that might mask like you just have an intestinal uh, bug. So if you have any symptoms, the best recommendation is to stay home. As Rob said, we have uh, virtual learning at all times. So if you are able to receive classes online, please do so and let, of course, the divisions know that you will be taking that class online. And something that is very important right now is that a lot of you guys are coming back from vacation from summer break. And it's we have a policy, a protocol in, that says that if you arrive from an international trip, you need to stay home for five days. Why five days, you might ask? It's because it's proven that COVID-19 symptoms appear five days from when you first caught it. So you will have five days to stay home. Those are continuous five days, not weekly five days. And then you will be allowed on campus. Okay. Uh, just for the layman out there like myself, just to also reiterate that the RO factor is this, how many people can you can, uh, pass the virus on to? So a factor so, of two would be two people. I infect you, both of you. 
then each of you, in fact, two yes, people. It's actually exponential. It's not, exactly. it's, not, it's not multipliable. So one person is capable of spreading it to seven to nine people. Yes. And then if you have an R factor, an R O factor of, of five or eight, it's an exponential. We're that talking just about yes. above 30. Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay, Dr. Garcia, when we have a contagious virus of any form, why is it important that we are using masks and how should we be using masks and what kind of masks? Okay, so if we are using masks, it, um, the scientific shows that only 1.5% of the um, population get infected if the people uh, who has the virus uh, use the mask and the other that is uh, healthy use it. But if somebody that has the virus use the mask and the other that is healthy don't use the mask, you have like a 10% of probability to get infected. If you have been vaccinated, this will low down, but you have the same probability of infection. So the main thing to do in this um, pan pandemia is to use the mask. You can use also other things that help, such as alcohol, such as cleaning your, ha your hands, but the most effective uh, thing to use that help you to not get the virus is the proper use of your mask. So the um, World Health Organization said that there are three kinds of masks that protect you the most. N95 or K95, surgical mask, FPP1, they protect you to get infected because they protect viruses in 95% to get inside your nose. So the proper use of the mask is to use uh, from your nose through all your mouth because the virus get in from your nose. So first use alcohol to clean your hand, then you have to take your mask and in the two part, use it from your ears. And then you have to pledge the, the, the part that has a metallic through your nose. So then you will not have their coming inside your nose. And you are like protect your nose and mouth. Then to take out your, your mask, you have to take it from your ears and then put that this way and use alcohol again, okay? Now for the use of surgical mask is almost the same. So you have your surgical mask, use it to your ears, then pledge the, the metallic part through your nose. And then again, if you use a two surgical mask will be better for you, especially for Delta because Delta virus is smaller, so it can get in. You can use double mask, surgical mask. And then alcohol because you were touching the part that it's outside okay so this is the proper way to use the surgical and k95 or n5 mask we prefer here in the school to use this type of mask because viruses uh, special delta the british virus the the british the british and also the brazilian one they are smaller and they are uh, in big quantity of viruses, so they can't get inside your mask. So if you use the, the, the other type of mask, you will not be as protect as, as you are if you use the World Hair Organization mask approved. Yes, thank you. I, I would like to ask, add something to that too, is that, you know, we see a lot of people wearing masks like this, 
with with the nose. Uh, one scientist that I've been following says you may as well just be wearing a good luck charm because the main the main passageway for the virus is the nose, not the mouth. And to the point where they're trying to develop a, a, a nasal vaccine that would inoculate the nose and kill the virus when it comes in. Um, and because now these new variants, there are about 1200 times more uh, virus that people are breathing out when they breathe. So it's so important. And two other things that I would add to that is one is these cloth masks I find are really good. If I use my surgical mask, but I have a problem with my ears. They don't like to withstand the force of the elastics. So I put the cloth mask over something like this. So I have double protection. I can clean the cloth one and this one I can dispose of, but it makes sure that the, the, the surgical mask stays close. And a following thing is because of the ear issue that I think a lot of children might have too. These are really good apparatus to purchase because you can clip it and that way it's not pushing on your ears all the time. It's actually holding it across your head and holding it tighter to your face. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Um, we also mentioned a few of the symptoms at the beginning. Are there any other things that we need to, to look for and also uh, be aware of within ourselves or our, or our children when we are looking at them coming to school? So, you know, when you are like, hey, we people that have a PCR test positive, you have some symptoms that you will find out, such as Nicola said, in the first five days. So at the fi fi five day, day, and also till the seventh day, it will appear uh, some symptoms such as maybe pain, pain, back pain. Also, you can have a fever or chills. You can start to cough. You will have shortness of breath, of difficult of breathing. You could be fatigued. You could have uh, mus muscle pain, headache. Uh, maybe if you have uh, loss of taste or smell, sore throat. There's a lot of people that have it. Um, congestions or runny nose, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. So. If you have been like in a public place or in a place that you don't have uh, to use your masks such as swimming pools or um, beach and you started to have these symptoms, you have to be aware and don't, uh, don't think that it's another thing because we are on Quito and Quito has a lot of cases of COVID-19. So, if you uh, are feeling um, any of these symptoms, maybe you have rhinitis and in, in summer you start to have runny nose or maybe on, on winter you have the runny nose or you think that you have rhinitis, please don't think that. Think that it's COVID-19. So don't come to the school. We will, uh, you will be isolated. Nicolas and I will uh, call you and also uh, give you the advice to be isolated in your house so you cannot uh, contact uh, your family and friends and uh, also our community. So please, if you have any clinical symptoms, such as I said, uh, be aware that it can be COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Ortega, Nicholas, our yes. medical personnel worked alongside the administration with developing our protocols. And these are based on science. Uh, one important process we have implemented for everyone entering the campus, which is students and personnel. Initially, parents are not going to be coming on campus. Um, is the online health declaration that activates the QR code on my phone, but can also print it out. I think it's very important for parents to know that now each student has their own QR code. Um, can you explain the process of the QR code so that all parents know how to do this correctly? Yes. Okay, so uh, the QR code, just in case I'm going to show you what a QR code looks like. I hope you can see it on, on camera. Uh, every member of the community is going to get a QR code. 
So the, the importance of the QR code right now is that it's linked to a health declaration form. This health declaration form is to be filled out daily in more and en most enterprises here in Quito and around the world to go to work or to go somewhere, you have to fill out uh, your health declaration form. This is how the medical department from school is can communicate with you if you have any symptoms. It takes usually less than two minutes to do. It is a very simple procedure. So how to fill it out? You can find the link in the official Academia Cotopaxi webpage right at the top. There's the screen line right there, right there that says submit health declaration form here. You click on it and you fill it out. You fill out the, all the information that is required. Do not leave any blanks because if the health declaration has any errors in it or you for some reason say that you've been in contact with someone with COVID-19, that is one of the questions, your QR will be deactivated and you will not be allowed on campus until you fix it. So how do you fix it? We, well, you get a call from us, the medical department, or you call us to tell us what happened with this health declaration. Now, it is very important to fill it out mindfully because there's only two of us in the medical department and one person in IT, in IT department. We have almost 230 people working plus students. We're gonna have around 600 people filling out a health declaration form daily so making a mistake can really delay your day because we need to get in contact with you to actually activate the qr code it takes less than two minutes if you do it mindfully it's going to be uh very very easy you can actually do it the night before you come to, to school the following morning which gives us the medical department more leeway to get in contact with you to activate the QR code. Um, you can do that from, I think it's six in the afternoon of the other day for the next day. And we will be implementing stuff uh, and changing the QR code and the questions as the year goes on, because we will need to get some information from you guys and eventually we won't need some other information. So it's always gonna be changing. So please read the whole thing and remember to click send. We have had people who fill it out, but forget to click send. So it's a very it's something of bearing in mind to do it very mindfully. It takes less than two minutes. And I, I really you must emphasize. Uh, I think that you have to read the questions. If you just yes. go through it and click yes, 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 you will not get a QR code because each question could be a positive or a negative yes. answer that you have to. So you really do need to read the questions. Thank you, uh, Doctor Ortega. Um, we also I think it's important for parents to remember. You might have seen it on the tours. But we now have two medical centers. One is for regular daily things that happen in schools, like people sometimes get cuts or they bang their knees. But for any symptoms that we went through earlier that could be COVID related, we have a new clinic, which is located up by the swimming pool at the pedestrian gate C. Dr. Garcia, can you just explain to parents what would happen if we send their, if their child is referred to that medical office? Okay, so if your child come to this medical office, it's because it has um, a clinical symptom. So um, maybe it can be COVID or it could be another pathology. So here in this medical office, we first take care of the symptom. We see if uh, it's fever or if, if the saturation or the oxy oxygen is fine. Also, then when we know uh, how is your kid, the, sin, the specific symptom, we will call you uh, by the, the telephone so you can come and pick your kid for your house or to take it for a more complex health center uh, in coordination with parents and school uh, authorization. Okay, so it will be um, here, the isolate, isolate place. So your kids uh, will be uh, take care by me and also they can be isolated for the other kids so they cannot contagious them. So it's super important you to answer the telephone and to uh, come and pick your kid. Yes, and if you do receive that phone call, you will not enter through the main gate. You would enter up by the swimming pool at gate C. Again, because 
if your child is potentially COVID positive, that means you may be also, we do not want to increase the amount of contagious uh, opportunities that we would have on the campus. Um, one of the things that many people have been asking, uh, parents have been inquiring about vaccinations. First of all, it's been really important to note that we, we are in the process throughout Ecuador. Ecuador is doing a very good job now with vaccination. Uh, our personnel, Nicholas, you can uh, go into more detail with that. But also we have to remember again that vaccination is one of many tools. It protects the person who's vaccinated, but it doesn't protect everybody else necessarily. That's why we still have to keep our protocols going. Nicholas, could you comment on the status of vaccination and also our testing procedures here at the school? Yes, of course. So the importance of vaccination has recently been published in a very important uh, journal, medical journal, New England Journal of Medicine, of why you can get vaccinated. So the importance is that vaccines reduce the mortality rate of COVID-19 almost to zero, and severe disease is very unlikely if you have a vaccine. Now, if you add that to all the biosafety procedures we've been following for over a year, washing your hands, social distancing, and wearing a proper mask, the percentage of someone actually being in an ICU for a very prolonged time is minimal. So it is very important to get vaccinated. With, there's a saying that I like nowadays that says the best vaccine is the one you get. They're all proven to work this way. So yes, back to on campus, we have, we're still ongoing with vaccination of staff and faculty. We are very lucky to have a 91% uh, vaccination uh, rate here at AC with our staff and faculty. Some have been fully vaccinated. Some are still in the process of getting vaccination, but it's a 91%, that's huge. And now here comes a big question that we get when we say that number, who's not vaccinated? Well, that is a part of the confidentiality agreement of the medical office. We are always trying to motivate people to follow safety procedures to get vaccinated, but some people can't get vaccinated because of health conditions. And they have been talked to individually and they know the procedures to follow and what not to do inside campus. But 91% is huge, it's huge and it's very important for all of us. And be before coming to work and being on, on campus, we've all been tested for COVID-19 and luckily we are all safe from the virus as of right now. Uh, yesterday, uh, I had a, had a meeting with a provider of, of, of tests and we will be using an antigen no swab test to, see, to test randomly on our staff and faculty to see if they are carrying the disease. The importance of the antigen test is that it tells you, it tells us and you if you are able to infect someone else. That is why it's used in the labor place so much because if you can't infect someone, but you still have a little symptoms or something, but you can't infect it, the disease is over. You, you, you can be on campus with certain precautions that they will they'll review with the medical department. But the reason we use the antigen test also is because PCR tests can give you a false positive or, or maintain positive for over 90 days. So 90 days of campus with a, with a positive PCR, that's the reason we're not using it. But that's why we're going back to the antigen, which is actually pretty good. It has a 98% sensibility and a specificity of 99%. So we're going to randomize test our, our staff and faculty on a periodical basis. Thank you. And, and you know, in my research, also seeing that that's one of the tactics that Europe has been using is lots of frequent testing, random selective testing throughout populations, including schools, as being one of the most important tools, in addition to things like proper nutrition, rest, uh, and, and obviously the vaccines. I, I want to just close with reminding parents that, you know, we will respect your family situation. If you are not in a position to send your child or your children to school, we understand that, and we are required, and we will be offering online learning from home um, opportunities for those students. That requires a partnership with you. We all went through this last year. We know that it's, it, it, it requires um, support from the home, but you'll also have that support from us. 
that that provision of online learning is also very important because if we have any students on our campus who cannot for some reason or will not oblige us the uh, health and safety protocols, following them and taking them seriously, make sure they're always wearing their masks, following instructions, we could require that student to go home and to learn from home. Because first and foremost, we want to maintain our campus. We want to have everybody on here in the safest environment possible. And there's no tolerance for people who will not contribute to that positive community effort, which we need to all 100% be part of. I would say to the parents also, and I'm a parent also, we have to model. We have to model what we expect from our children and consistently. And a very big part of that is uh, most of the schools that have had um, have been open over the last year or so, they're finding that the main issue is not on campus. We're watching this. It's what's happening outside campus. And you only uh, yourselves as, a, as parents and as a family can safeguard your children and your, your own circle outside of the school. And please help us by doing that at home. I want to thank you all. Um, one last thing is probably important is that we are going when we open this it's a new procedure for entering so we we ask you to be patient and also to be punctual to help us make sure we get all the students on campus in an orderly manner and also at the end of the day it may be a little bit rough at first because it's something totally new but i'm sure that we will all learn together and become more and more efficient at it thank you very much and we're really looking forward to having a an exciting year of learning back here at Academia Cotopaxi.